December 1971. The Indian subcontinent is caught in the blanket of a war. West Pakistan has sent its military to crush a Bengali movement for freedom in East Pakistan, resulting in a large-scale genocide. This triggers a call for help from the locals to its neighbor India, and a large-scale refugee crisis happens. India responds with humanitarian and military aid, and this intervention results in a full-scale war between India and Pakistan, both in the East and in the West, now known as the Bangladesh Liberation War. These events are as they took place on the western frontier of the war on that cold morning of 14th December, 1971. A formation of Pakistan Air Force F-86 Sabres takes off from Peshawar Air Force Base and heads east towards India. Their objective, dive into the Kashmir Valley, turn north, mount a bomb attack on Srinagar and escape back to Pakistan. The Sabres enter India by flying over the Pir Panjal range at 10,000 feet and then dive downhill into the valley picking up speed. After a few minutes, they pull up to climb to a height of about 5,000 feet and form a visual contact with the Srinagar Air Force Base. As the Sabres fly towards Srinagar, they pass over Avantipur Air Force Base and hearing the sounds of the jets above, Avantipur raises the alarm. As an alarm is raised at Srinagar, Flight Lieutenant Gumman, call sign G-Man and Flying Officer Nirmal Jeet Singh Sekho, call sign Brother, are on standby too which means they have been trained and are on duty to take off in less than two minutes to execute a CAP or combat air patrol. G-Man and brothers start their nets and make their way to the runway, ready to take on the enemy. G-Man lines up with the runway and begins his takeoff run. Brother has to wait for about 20 seconds till the runway is clear. Meanwhile, the Sabres are lining up in position, one behind each other, to commence their attack. Sekho immediately lines himself behind the two sabers which just overshot him and the chase begins. The sabers realizing they have a gnat on their tail immediately do a hard break left and Seiko follows them on the turn. The saber number 3 and number 4 after dropping the bombs pull up while saber number 3 flies behind the two sabers in front. Saber number 4 decides to head home. Seiko maneuvers his plane behind the trailing saber number 2 and opens fire. His 30mm cannon hits the Sabre and there is a trail of smoke and fire from the plane's belly. It shakes, descends and decides to drop out of the fight and go home. Now Seiko decides to go for the leader. Sabre number 3, taking advantage of his high speed dive during the bombing run, picks up speed and quickly closes the gap between the gnat and itself. Seiko dodges the bullets of his enemy while keeping behind the lead saber and not letting him out of his sight. The trailing saber shoots his gun empty, failing to take a hit on Seiko, and with no more ammunition to last the battle, drops out and escapes away. Seiko, now free from the danger behind him, levels, drops his tanks and with fresh vigor goes after saber number one. It's again a turning fight, with the lead saber trying to get the gnat off its tail. While Seiko closes in on the distance, he brings in the lead saber in his kill zone. And then, with his 30mm cannon, starts inflicting damage. The lead saber pilot panics and gives an SOS call for help. Unaware to Seiko or anyone else on the ground, the formation of sabers comprised of six, not four aircrafts. These two aircrafts had not dropped in for the bombing raid. Upon hearing the call of help from the lead saber, saber number 5 and 6 jettison their tanks and dive from the height. Gaining a speed advantage from the dive, saber number 5 quickly brings himself close to the fight below. Seiko realizes that he has been jumped upon by more enemy aircraft. The rear saber gets a fix on Seiko and triggers a 3 second long burst at him from his 6 machine guns and Seiko is hit. The nap trailing fire and smoke tries to steady itself but the plane quickly loses altitude and already at such a low height and badly damaged, snaps over backward and immediately crashes. Seiko ejected too low and didn't survive the crash. 
No defense aircrafts were positioned in Srinagar as per international agreement dating back to 1948. Hence, Sekhom was not acclimatized to Kashmir's harsh terrain and weather. Yet, he and his colleagues fought successive waves of enemy attacks with extreme valor, with him ultimately sacrificing his own life in the defense of Srinagar. For this selfless act of heroism, Flying Officer Nirmal Jeet Singh Sekhom was awarded the highest honor of bravery in the Indian military, the Param Vir Chakra. As per the citation of the award, the sublime heroism, supreme gallantry, flying skill and determination, above and beyond the call of duty, displayed by Flying Officer Sekho in the face of certain death, set new heights to Air Force traditions. The war came to an end two days later, resulting in the birth of a new country, Bangladesh, when the Pakistan Army surrendered unconditionally.